Welcome to episode 51. This is a continuing story of my mom. Um, she uh, grew up in uh, Nice, France during a normal year and uh, also uh, in Shanghai during the summer because her father was basically the ambassador to China. He was actually the consul general to Shanghai. There was no central government really, so he was the highest ranking diplomat for Finland. So she, uh, when she lived in Shanghai, uh, she uh, had a job. <laughs> she drew pen and ink drawings for fashion uh, in the English-speaking uh, newspaper in Shanghai. And the director of that paper uh, came to the Club Sportif for dancing tango. <laughs> so that was kind of fun. But what happened to her after uh, she was uh, living in Nice she went to Lycée there, high school, and grew up, you know. And then she took art lessons, and she, she wanted to be an artist. She was an artist, basically. She took uh, lessons in portrait painting and all of that. And, uh, and then she uh, went to New York to, uh, to draw f fashion photographs, basically. Fashion uh, art, pen and ink, because they saw her work in Shanghai, and they liked it. And, uh, and where she went was, as I understand this, she went to John Powers fashion uh, modeling agency at the time was a place and uh, and she was working uh, do, doing drawings for fashion and she had a problem in New York her she was being sponsored by her uncle uh, Prince uh, Dmitri Aristov who is uh, her uh, was uh, her uncle basically so my grandfather's I guess brother or whatever something like that and uh, so he was taking care of her while she was in New York, and my grandfather was trapped in Shanghai because Japan and, sh and China had, had gone to war. And so there was a problem getting money from, uh, from China to uh, New York. So uh, my mom, that's why she had a job. <laughs> it was, yeah, she was going to do it anyway. Uh, and then as she was drawing these drawings for this John Powers modeling agency, they actually hired her, and she became a model. And guess what? She was the woman on the billboards for Marlboro cigarettes all over the United States. So she became a famous model for modeling uh, for Marlboro. And, uh, and of course, she didn't smoke. Interesting, huh? Smart girl, right? So that was her life in New York. And then the other thing that happened to her when she was in New York uh, is uh, she met a guy uh, at a Broadway play and he was a Broadway play producer and songwriter. His name was Cole Porter. And he was producing plays with Ethel Merman in them, in it, right? Famous actress. And he said, look, uh, I need a French-speaking maid. Uh, would you like to take a part in the play and be on stage with Ethel and all the gang? And my mom said, oh, yeah, well, that would be fun. And so my mom uh, got a job working on Broadway, right? And so she was having a great time. And then what happened was my father, who was uh, from Houston, Texas, he was born in Houston, he uh, was in the oil business, he designed, he was a sales engineer, he went to Rice University and was a sales engineer, and he uh, helped design uh, oil refinery equipment. And so he and a friend of his from Houston, Dr. Louis Girard, who, who uh, was an eye doctor, they uh, were good friends, and they came up to New York to party, <laughs> of course. And when they got to New York, they, they hung out together, and they met my mom. And my mom, believe it or not, I think this is what I understand. I may be wrong about this, but I think... But she wanted to marry a cowboy. That was in her... I, I don't know where she got that idea. And actually, I think she was dating a, a cowboy movie actor. His name was Randolph Scott. But I'm not sure about that, but I'm pretty sure that's she was doing that. And so anyway, so she was very interested in meeting my father because he's from Houston and, and his friend. And they're Texans, right? Cowboys, she thinks, right? So th they met and, uh, and they started going out and, uh, and, and they fell in love, my father and my mom. And uh, they uh, decided to get married. And, uh, but there was a problem. They, they couldn't have a wedding because, uh, well, they could, but my grandfather was stuck in Shanghai, so he wasn't going to be there to give away my mom at the wedding, so that was a problem. So my mom went to her guardian, this, uh, uncle, you know, Prince uh, 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 Dmitri Aristov, and, uh, and, and my grandfather asked him to give away my mom at the wedding, and so that's what happened. 
And then Louis Girard, the, the eye doctor, he met a Hungarian girl, and he fell in love with her, and he wanted to marry too, so ready? They had a double wedding in New York. <laughs> so these two Texan guys went to New York and found wives, and they took the wives, or brought the, brought the wives back to Houston, to Texas. And so that's how my mom came to Houston. And then uh, when she was in Houston, she was married to my dad, and she had three children. I was the first one. And, uh, and then uh, I have a sister. Her name is uh, Lucia. In Russian, it's Ludmila, which is my, our grandmother's name, is Ludmila, which is Lucia also in, in English. And then uh, we had a brother, a younger brother, a wonderful guy, uh, Robert Nicholas Rawson. And Nicholas is a family name. Uh, my mother had a brother named Nicholas, and so it's a long-standing Russian name. And, uh, and so we had a, a very happy existence in Houston. And we had a house there, and, uh, and my, you know, that's, that's how we lived. And so I lived in Houston and grew up there and as a local boy. And, um, and that's the story. And my mom, uh, of course, knew all these people in New York. She took ballet lessons, I forgot to mention this, from uh, um, uh, George Balanchine, Bal George Balanchine, who was uh, uh, with the Ballet Russe. She knew him in, in Nice, France, and she took ballet lessons at the uh, Ballet Russe de Monte Carlo, right? And when she went to New York, he was in New York, and he started the New York City Ballet. So my mom was involved in that. So, so what happened is that uh, people in Houston, they wanted to have a ballet, right? Houston Ballet. They didn't have one. So my mom had a meeting in, in our house. I was there. I was a kid. I didn't know what the hell was going on, but I was around. And, uh, and they started the Houston Ballet Foundation in our house. That's where it began. And it's since become a very famous ballet company. So, uh, so my mom did that, and then she also was a portrait artist. And she painted portraits of famous people, and uh, and so we had a very interesting life. And she also played the piano, of course. And oh, she sang also. She had another friend from New York, the the husband of uh, uh, of Gloria Vanderbilt, <laughs> and his name uh, was um, uh, oh, oh God, what was his name? Um, Leopold Stokowski. Yeah, and he was a conductor, very famous conductor, and uh, of symphonies. And in fact, in, the, in Walt Disney film, Fantasia, he was the conductor in that film. And he, he talked to Mickey Mouse, you know, in, on screen. And that was Leopold Stokowski. And so he's a famous conductor. And he came to Houston, and my mom uh, introduced him to the Houston Symphony, which is already in existence. And he, he became uh, the, the head of the Houston Symphony, Le, Leopold Stokowski. And I remember, as a kid, I was with him one day, and my mom said, I loved engineering. I, I, I'm an engineer, and uh, my mom uh, told told him, uh, told me. She said he's going to do a concert, uh, a recording. I'm sorry, a recording in City Hall, in the Music Hall of of Houston, uh, for, uh, with his orchestra, and he's going to use the latest recording techniques. There's a guy uh, who worked for NASA who's developed a recording machine that works with 35 millimeter film. And it makes better recordings than uh, normal audio tape, and so this is going to be the first, uh, digi you know, really digital uh, orchestra recording. And and my mom said you might want to go, and so he invited me. So I went to the recording session. I was there when Leopold Stokowski recorded these these famous uh, symphonies for the Houston Symphony. And I remember something that he did that really impressed me. He was sitting uh, there reading music scores, right? And I said, what's it like to, uh, I'm back. Uh, so Leopold Sikowski, uh was reading this uh, music, you know, paper. And I asked him, I said, what's it like to do that? And he looked at me and he said, I can hear the music, all of it. And I went, oh my God. Very famous conductor of symphonies. And he can look at a piece of paper and he hears the music. I was a young guy at this point, of course, a, a little kid, and I went, I can't believe that. That's incredible. And it really is incredible. So 
these were the people my mom would bring to Houston from time to time, people that she knew from New York. She was a friend of Gloria Vanderbilt. That's how she met Stokowski. So they were, because Gloria Vanderbilt was also a model, and she worked for the same modeling agency, I think, that uh, my mom did. Uh, John Powers. So, um, so anyway, we had a good time in Houston. My mom and my dad, and my dad was, you know, great guy. He, great guy, he, Mr. Reliable. He took care of all of us. We had a really nice house and uh, a good life. And uh, and my dad's the one that sent me to my school in Switzerland. Kind of interesting. He's the one that came up with that idea. So, uh, so my dad was a, a great guy. They both were great. <laughs> my parents were really wonderful. So anyway, that's the end of this story. This is how my mom got became a Texan. <laughs> she came to Texas, married a cowboy. Um, so if you like this, um, oh, my sponsor is uh, Synostics.com. It uh, has developed a machine uh, that you put under your feet when you're sitting at a desk. It's a medical device, external medical device. And what it does is it uh, helps your heart. It, it's a pump. There are two pumps in your body. There's one in your heart, and then the other pump is this soleus muscle in your lower, the back of your lower leg. It's tied to your Achilles uh, tendon. And it, it, when it flexes, it pumps blood up to, and fluids from your lower limbs all the way back up to your heart and helps the heart. The heart doesn't have to work as hard, and so it increases your, your health, better blood flow for everything. And all the fluids uh, are, they don't accumulate in your lower body anymore. And, um, and especially for older people who can't walk very well, this, is, this machine is a, a, a real benefit because it exercises a muscle. And uh, the only other way to exercise is to walk. And you have to walk a certain way to do it also. So, so this machine can help. And now we're finding out that uh, it improves uh, blood flow in the brain. And as a result, people who have cognitive problems uh, be, uh, return to normal after about six months because better blood flow in the brain. So this machine actually may be the solution, is the solution, to uh, cognitive decline problems. And uh, we have a lot of these machines, this Sonostics, and they're all being used uh, uh, and tested. And we want to take this, com this company worldwide. So that's why he, why they're advertising with me. And I'm helping them. And, uh, and a good friend of mine is, works for the company, so that's always helps. So uh, Synostics is a very good company, and they have invented something really interesting. Uh, so if you uh, want to support this channel, uh, <clears throat> what you can do is subscribe, of course. And <laughs> thank you, whatever that is. And uh, uh, also uh, uh, share the, this video with other people, and also make a comment. And also, you can donate money if you want. I'm traveling around the world doing this, working in coffee shops, having fun. Uh, you can send money to me to buy a, a glass of wine, like that's what I've got here, or a cup of coffee. And uh, it's called, it's, uh, the link is below. It's called buymeacoffee.com. And, and you do forward slash Derek, D-E-R-I-K, Rawson, R-A-W-S-O-N, except you do an R instead of an N. It's a security thing. And then you'll go to a, a website. And this, this uh, Buy Me A Coffee has a million subscribers. It works with all banks, all credit cards worldwide. And you can uh, use your credit card to buy me a glass of wine. And say thanks if you like what I'm talking about here. You know, when you're with friends in a cafe, what do you do? You buy them a cup of coffee if you like what they're talking about. And... Uh, so that's what's going on here. Also, <clears throat> there'll be links at the top if this is a YouTube, if you're watching this on YouTube. I'm everywhere. I'm on YouTube, I'm on X, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook. But if you're on YouTube, you'll see some links at the top and you can click on those to go to other episodes that I've done. My episodes are EP, Easy Paul. This is episode 51. And uh, there's also going to be a link above on YouTube. YouTube, it says... Uh, uh, playlist. If you click on the playlist, you get a list of all my podcasts, and you can listen to them one after another <laughs> until you get bored. <laughs> so that's kind of a fun feature to have. All of this is free. You don't have to do anything. You can just relax and listen and enjoy life. 
But uh, but I would appreciate uh, if you would support this channel and me uh, because uh, and and also Synestics, my sponsor. That's the main. Thing. That's a good company. It really deserves a backing. So uh, and we're looking to take it worldwide. That's what we want to do. So this is the end of episode 52. And uh, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next podcast. Bye-bye.